Hello everyone, this is Timothy Mark with Alexandria. How's everybody doing today? And the show has a new name and is now called the Tickle Trunk of Horrors. And it has a new website that's coming out uh, either tomorrow or the next day. <coughs> it's under construction right now. And in today's show, the very first show of Tickle Trunk and Horrors, we're going to have a special guest, Betsy Baker from the Evil Dead. So hopefully there's a lot of Evil Dead fans out there that are ready for this one. And uh, before we go into the Evil Dead and our very, very special guest, Betsy Baker, I just want to sort of describe a tickle trunk of horrors. Really, what is that? What what does that mean? What it means to us, and we hope that our our fans will kind of get the gist of our meaning too. Tickle trunk of horrors could mean a heck of a lot of things. We're going to discuss paranormal, supernatural, horror, uh, anything to do with uh, the kind of far out there uh, topics and. Uh, uh, the website is going to have uh, our podcast on there, going to have books, uh, anything that uh, our, our fans want to get a hold of us in regards to Tickle Trunk of Horrors. Uh, uh, it's, we're really excited about that and uh, you know the, the website is under construction so tune in really quick and um, we'll be featuring our podcast. And I have to tell you this, that in the coming days as well, we are going to have super fantastic guests and uh you, you know you're going to want to stay tuned because it's going to be really a thrill ride of uh we're going to take you almost on a treasure hunt with all these uh various uh guests from different genres and uh, you're going to want to stay tuned folks so very pleased about that and again very very excited to have betsy baker join us in today's podcast and uh, on our website, you'll be able to buy various products like books and jewelry and stuff like that and, and home protection uh, products. So uh, I'm going to play a clip from The Evil Dead. And then in this clip, it has Bruce Campbell uh, playing Ash in The Evil Dead. And it has uh, Betsy Baker uh, playing Linda. Here's a little clip from the film right here. You bastards! Why are you torturing me like this? Why? <laughs> Shut up! We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. Not another peep. Time to go to sleep. We. <laughs> So that was uh, Betsy Baker saying we're going to get you to uh, Bruce Campbell's character in the film The Evil Dead. And uh, I know you got a little history on The Evil Dead right there. For and you. for some of you that may have been living under a rock, or maybe you haven't been living under a rock, but just give you a quick synopsis on The Evil Dead for those of you, few we hope, that don't know what this film is about. And The Evil Dead is a 1981 American supernatural horror film written and directed by Sam Raimi and executive produced by Raimi and Bruce Campbell. And it also starts stars alongside Ellen Sandwich and our very special guest today, Betsy Baker. And uh, to put the theme in a kind of horror nutshell, the film focuses on five college students vacationing in a very isolated cabin in a remote wooded area and this particular wooded area the film was shot on location in a remote cabin located in Morristown Tennessee and this group of five college students they actually find an audio tape that releases a legion of demons spirits and the members of the group suffer from demonic possession leading of course to increasingly gory mayhem and what good horror uh, film not worth its weight and corpse doesn't have 
gory mayhem, which in my mind, it sure in the hell isn't a horror film if it doesn't have demonic spirits and, of course, gory mayhem. And a kind of quick t tidbit for all you out there is um, horror author Stephen King, who I'm a huge fan of Stephen King, gave such a rave review of this film and it helped convince New Line Cinema to serve as its distributor. So the Evil Dead, for all those in the know, uh, and all those that should be in the know, has de developed a reputation as one of the largest cult films and has been cited among the greatest horror films of all times. And it certainly is one of the greatest horror films of all time in my mind. And I'm a huge horror fan. And uh, The Evil Dead, of course, 1981. And in my mind, the 1980s was really when horror films were at its pinnacle and really uh, were at its fine, uh, finest hour. Because I can remember uh, going to, uh, you all remember video stores in Canada, going to Blockbuster Video or even our corner uh, convenience stores, you could rent VHS videotapes. And I can tell you with complete certainty, every time a new horror film came out in the 80s, I was first in line at that video store to rent my VHS and I, you know, I would play that sucker and you had the rental for 24 hours and you could bet that I was playing that more than one time over the 24 hours. And to me, that was really the golden age in my mind, um, 1980s, going to uh, your local rental store. And uh, it was just, I think, the, the whole idea of getting out, going uh, to rent a, a videotape, you know, getting some popcorn, getting some chips or a case of beer or something like that and getting a bunch of buddies or friends together and making it a movie weekend. We had a lot of horror marathons and, uh, you know, a lot of friends would get together, get a bunch of horror films on VHS and really have a slam dunk horror mar marathon. I mean, those were the days, folks, uh, the days when we had horror films such as... Uh, the Evil Dead coming out and I mean that's just one of the cult classics in my mind in regards to horror, mayhem, uh, demons, possessions. I mean what a classic story to have five college students uh, go to a remote cabin and uncover an audio tape and being able to summon demons and uh, you know demonic possession I mean really has all the key ingredients when you're really mixing up this cake that you call a cult horror film. It's got all the ingredients that you need, folks. And like I said, for those of you that don't know who, what the film The Evil Dead is, get under from under that rock and do yourself a favor and get, you know, get your hold, get your hands on The Evil Dead and do yourself a favor and watch that film. Truly is a cult classic. And again, the tickle trunk of horrors is just absolutely tickled uh, to death to have Betsy Baker joining us today as our guest. She did play Linda in the film and uh, she's really a well-rounded American actress uh, being born uh, May 8th. Her birthday is coming up so happy early birthday to Betsy Baker whose birthday is on May 8th. She was born 1955 and she was born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa and uh, really she started her acting career again with in 1981 of course with The Evil Dead and she also played in a film Word of Honor where she played Denise uh, McNeil. So very very um, thrilled to have uh, Betsy Baker joining us on today's show. Uh, the first really high profile uh, of so many to come for our podcast series, Tickle Trunk of Horrors. And that's really what it is, folks. Uh, we're going to provide you with, uh, you know, a Tickle Trunk of Horrors uh, with so many different genres of guests. And uh, it's just going to kind of make you uh, very, very impressed on what's out there and what we have to offer. So, we're just waiting for Betsy Baker to call us in f to join the podcast officially. But I've been so super excited since hearing that she's going to be our guest, of course, being a huge Evil Dead fan myself. And I know there's a lot of you out there 
there's a lot of you out there that are waiting for us to post this podcast. So a lot of Evil Dead fans. And if you're not an Evil Dead for, uh, fan, get with the program. Become a fan because it really is a cult classic horror film. So very, very excited to have uh, this caliber of an actress in the horror genre join us. Yeah, and uh, Betsy's been on television too. She's done Young and the Restless. I think All My Children. She's done Grey's Anatomy. She's done Ray Donovan. She's done Hand of God. Uh, she's done uh, the other hospital show, ER. Well, she did. Uh, she was Doctor We uh, Doctor Wheeler in ER. That was 2009. As well as uh, she was in Southland in 2010. And then of course. Uh, True Blood, she was a midwife in True Br Blood, and uh, also uh, great, like I said, Grey's Anatomy in 2016, she was Barbara Davis, and um, some of the other films that she's done as well is um, Oz, The Great and Powerful, uh, The Middle, uh, again, Days of Our Lives, True True Blood, New Girl, and, uh, you know, she really has a huge caliber of work that she's done starting in 1981 with Word of Honor and, of course, The Evil Dead, and it's just going to be so super, super thrilling to have her join us, and when I say well-rounded as well, uh, she started uh, piano lessons at age five, very, very musically inclined actress to have started piano lessons at age five and she also took voice lessons and studied dance and uh, she attended Michigan State University and graduated with a degree in theater education and classical voice and I think that really makes you well rounded in the field of acting or an actress if you can actually have a formal theater education and classical voice training because as we know that you know to be in my mind to be considered an actor we may have Bessie theater right there hold on education one second. folks there we go hello welcome to the tickle chunk of horrors is this uh Bessie Baker yeah this is the tickle chunk of horrors show it sure is yeah. how are you doing hi guys hi and so it's great. We were just giving everybody a rundown on your career there uh, since 1981, and we were even going into some of your uh, your college and and training at the age of five. You were playing piano, huh? At five, I was playing piano. That is absolutely true. I was just telling the audience too that I think it's such uh, amazing, and it you know to be a well-rounded actor or actress to be able to have formal theater education and as well you've had classical voice training and then the part that really stymied me is that again you started piano lessons at age five I mean that's just a musical prodigy in itself and I I really have a lot of respect for you when I you know I read all that information and I said you know this is an actress that is a force kind of to be reckoned with and I, I really commend you for you know being such a well-rounded actress and I think that's absolutely amazing well you're being uh, you're being very gracious and way too kind I mean you know, piano lessons started out with some just the little notes and, you know, how far I could stretch my fingers. So, uh, and then it, you know, continued through high school and a little bit of college. And uh, I added voice and dance. And um, even as old as I am right now in 2018, about three, and I've been taking acting classes since moving out to L.A. Um, off and on since the 80s, but in the last three years, I've, I've done a lot of improv as well, which was entirely new to me. We had no improv um, when I went to college, and, and if we did, I didn't do any, so I have been, um, I just think it's always a good idea to continue to learn, and um, so, but you're, you're being very kind. I, 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 have, a, I have a question for you, because I know that you've, uh, you've done a lot of uh, television shows, and uh, out of your your television shows, what what would be the uh, the favorite set that you've worked on? Gosh, it's uh, a good question. 
There's that old saying, you know, the favorite television show that you're working on is the one you're you're working on last, you know, because it meant you got a job. But I did enjoy um, working on Grey's Anatomy. It, uh, Grey's Anatomy is a medical drama, but it also turned out that particular week was almost um, a dramedy, which means there was there was a bit of there was a lot of dry comedy built into that. Um, into that week's episode. Um, and the other thing I liked in the last couple of years, I really enjoyed working with Zach Galifianakis on Baskets. Um, I did not get to work with Louis Sanderson, which was a shame, but we did spend the day together, Zach and I, and, um, you know, a couple of other actors. And I have to tell you, we worked in a real hotel room um, on the other side of Los Angeles. It was literally approximately 114 degrees. Um, outside and about 118 degrees inside this little tiny hotel room, but it was one of the greatest experiences. Um, but I would actually say almost everything I've worked on in TV has been a fun, you know, a fun experience and memorable on the set. I noticed that uh, on on your IMDb page it says that you did Young and the Restless, and uh, is that is that accurate? Yes, it's accurate. And, uh, I did a one. I was a um, hospital supervisor. For, I probably, I think that was just about a year or so ago, maybe a little more. It was just. It was a one day. They had thought that um, whatever the young female nurse, uh, they had thought that if she, if they developed her character, then she got in a lot of trouble. That I would be back, but apparently she cleared it up. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and I never okay. came back to work with the hospital. Supervisor again, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I remember as a child, my grandma making me watch the uh, Young and Restless with her before you know school. I mean, before I ever started school, and uh, that's that's definitely one of her favorite shows. Did you ever watch that as a kid too, or no? You know, I didn't watch that as a kid. I'm so old. I watched General Hospital and pretty much Days of Our Lives. That that's sort of I I remember General Hospital and Days of Our Lives, and uh, you know what. You're really only as old as you think you are, and I, you know, I when I was doing research on you, I mean, I, I've heard about you prior in your your scope of work, and I I really have to say that you know what, you are an awesome, you know, I don't consider uh, age ha coming into a factor of anything at all, because like you said to me, and this is sort of sticking in my mind that you know you you never stop learning and you're always expanding your horizons and when I was doing some more uh, reading up on some of the few things that I didn't know that you you did I was just I, I, I was just kind of overwhelmed and I said well I, I you know if I could even accomplish one or two of those things that this lady a real fire firecracker has done I'd be well on my way and I mean I must say that I was very intrigued with your uh, all the headline engagements that you had when you uh, throughout the south when you were involved with that group called Musicana, and I thought, wow, this lady's, I mean, she's just got it all going on there. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, actually, Musicana was a great experience for me. A lot of great, talented people went through those ranks of Musicana, and a lot of them uh, went on to become Broadway stars, worked on Broadway, uh, during plays. A lot of them still are. Um, and it was, they, they were, those were great memories. We worked, you know, that's usually the case too. So the, the efforts or the work or the, or the, um, things that you do, you like to take the most work and they almost cause the most pain, either emotionally or physically, or one thing you remember most fondly. Um, because you did put forth effort and, uh, we worked really hard. Uh, we, you know, we did shows just like they do in a play, six times a week, seven times a week. Let me, let, and, um, go ahead, I'm you sorry. know, we just, uh, we moved to dance and it was a great time. Out of, out of all the films that you've done since, uh, The Evil Dead, what, uh, what's been your, your, the, the set that you've had the most fun on? Oh, the most fun on, uh, huh, that's a good question. Um, well, I know that I... One of the most recent ones, which is the most exhilarating, is a uh, HBO show that's coming out. Um, and I don't, I, I call it a film, but it's really uh, an eight-episode series. But it felt like a film. 
Um, that would be um, an HBO series that's coming out this summer with starring Amy Adams and Patricia Clarkson called Sharp Object. And um, that was an amazing experience. And we had for a week up in Northern California, I had another heat wave. I don't know what it is with heat waves and, and me working, but um, it was this extraordinary heat wave at the end of May up in the Napa area. Uh, of like 108 and 110 degrees outside, and we had a lot of us in, um, we had over 100, 150 extras each day, and they were, 80% of them were in uh, Civil War, heavy, heavy, heavy um, uh, outfits, and so that was pretty exhilarating. But yeah, I worked throughout the summer on that last year, and that's actually premiering, I think, in late June, early July on HBO this summer. Wow, that's a pretty incredible. But I mean, that's just a, I, you know, you're putting a lot of blood and sweat into your performances, and then you're dealing with the environmental uh, uh, aspects as well. So I mean, that that can be really grueling. On, uh, but I mean, when I've watched a lot of your performances and stuff, um, uh, boy, I mean, it sure uh, you'd never know. I mean on the outcome of uh, what the performance is on i mean you're you know to me you're you you really have made it and after you know you were in your um musicana you said people went to broadway but hell you went on to be a hollywood hollywood movie star <laughs> <laughs> you know i think i just automatically hired you as my new pr agent I really oh know <laughs> <laughs> hey uh uh betsy I have a, yes, I, I, I kind of, as a horror fan myself, you know, I'm really wanting to get into the Evil Dead stuff, and uh, I know that you've probably been beaten to death with those questions, but uh, we, uh, that's okay, I have to tell you the honest truth, as people say, I wouldn't be talking to you today, I don't believe, if some of the history of the Evil Dead didn't exist, so I'm really excited to be here well, there's a question that uh, Alexandria was asking last night to me, and uh, what, what was the question that well, she had? It, uh, the question I had, I, there was something that I had read uh, in Happen uh, Stance, and it said that uh, during uh, the filming process, there was a very difficult uh, situation that proved extremely uncomfortable for the cast and crew. Was that something that you remember or something that you feel that you could speak about in regards to the Evil Dead for a lot of the fans? The, the, oh, yeah, I'll be happy to speak about it. There were a lot of nights, actually most nights, that were really uncomfortable and unpleasant. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Was there one that yeah. really comes to mind? On set. We worked it wasn't a set. It was actually a real cabin um, in the winter, October, November, December, in December and then some pickups. Uh, pickup means is when you have to go back and, and either do some more work or reshoot something. And we did that in March and April. But October, November, December, when I was there, we were in a cabin in, in the countryside of Tennessee. And we moved that location from Detroit because we had heard that Detroit was going to be so, had such a bad fall and winter. And as it turned out, Tennessee had one of the worst falls um you know, and winter is on record. And this cabin had no heat, no running water, no bathroom. And we shot at night. So not only were you changing your brain clock from sleeping during the day and then working at night, but it was cold, miserable, wet, damp. Let's see. Um, let's see. We, I, there were, you know, we didn't have back then. I know it only, only 35 or 40 years ago, but we didn't have cases of bottled water. We just brought thermoses of water with us. And then when that was done, that was done. And we raced, all raced back uh, every morning when the sun rose and went back to our house where we all lived, Captain Crew. And it was sort of a race to see who could get into a hot shower first. So, yeah, that's definitely, yeah. Yeah, because I noticed uh, in some of your scenes, because now, now looking back on the film, knowing that it was the winter time, you you were actually barefoot in some of those scenes, so you were probably really cold for sure. Oh yeah, we were really cold for sure. You, you, we did not have enough blankets. At one time, for a couple of weeks, they brought in what was at the time steam safe, which was a um, which was a gas or propane fueled heater um, to try and keep the cabin warm, but. You know, years later, they discovered that any sort of heat that was emitted from those kind of machines in the 70s and the 80s were extremely, extremely dangerous. So, 
<laughs> Go figure. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what did you think of the uh, the reboot that they that just came out not too long ago? Well, you know, it's um, they call it a remake, and I've always had a, 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 a real problem with films that are remade. First of all, it's a compliment if it's remade because they must have thought a lot about it in order to remake it again. But if it's not remade exactly like the last one, just maybe enhanced with, you know, certain things, then it's not really a remake. It might be a, a, a recreation or a new creation of an old film. Um, you know, the new Evil Dead had some amazing effects. But it was, to me, because the effects were so much more improved over the last 30, 40 years, the effects are so much more violent, and the effects are so many, so much more. And there were so many other storylines tied into the second remake of Evil Dead that it didn't seem to be like a remake. It seemed to be a movie that was similar in some cases to the first movie made. Yeah, it was. It was very different sense. because the the film that you were in was actually it had a lot of comedy to it, which I liked. And uh, the the remake didn't, and I didn't like the fact right. that they had the the lead. At, you know, I didn't like the fact that Bruce's Campbell had been replaced with a girl. It just changed the whole thing. It, and I, it's a, it's I'm a fan of Evil Dead, and so I did not like the remake either. I liked the original. And to me, it, I, it, it, to me, it wasn't a remake. It was just a different recreation of um, sort of a scene, and that's not a remake in my mind. And, um, you know, there, I think there's a, a clear definition between, um, uh, scary and violent. Right. I think, though I do think there were parts of the original Evil Dead that were violent and considered very violent back then in the late 70s, early 80s, don't get me wrong, I think that the aspect of violence has gone way off the top of the ledge, and the, the remake of Evil Dead, meaning the one that was just made a few years ago, really jumped off the bridge on that one. And I think there's a lot to be said for scary movies. Scary movies can scare you, scare you, much more than violent movies. I have to agree with you that, that completely in, in that respect too. And I mean, The Evil Dead, I think, I mean, to me, being a cult classic in the horror world, I'm a huge horror fan myself. I mean, when you're starting to change... Uh, characters kind of manipulate a bunch of things you're really taking away from the original film when you know when you uh uh do a, a film that's almost perfection in the horror world why would you want to fool around with it in my mind and uh, change people's perception of what the evil dead really is and will always be yeah and, i can't agree with you more it's, i i agree with you totally and i think yeah. there's certain but films that's how i feel about the remake yeah, I know, right? That's that's certain films shouldn't be touched, like The Evil Dead or National Lampoon's Vacation. They, they, those films should never be recreated or whatever. But yeah. uh, the question I had for you as a kid, when I bought the uh, the first the, the Evil Dead on VHS, it was about a month later. I went back to the video store and I seen The Evil Dead again on VHS, but a different cover. I purchased that one, yeah. but it was the same movie. So I'm guessing it was first. Oh. It was first released as a uh, independent film and then picked up by New Line Cinema after. Uh, yeah, I think they do that with a lot. Well, I don't know if they do that with a lot of movies now, but they certainly did it back then, and that's a classic example of what you just said. Yeah, I, I, and I, I didn't see any difference really in the uh, in the redistributed film than I had in the in the first film. It was two. It was the exact same film, and uh, right, right. Yeah. It, it, it kind of got right. me a little bit, but it's, uh, you know, what, what y'all were touching on with the uh, Book of the Dead in that film, you know, that's actually a, a real book. Oh, I, I'm sorry, which film? On the Evil Dead. Uh-huh. You, you know, y'all had that uh, that book in the film. There was, oh, the book, uh-huh. You know, that's, uh-huh. uh, that's, uh, that's the book that, uh, I think it was National Geographic or the History Channel just did a show on the real book. That, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. There's there's actually a, a real book that has all those spells and things in it. And it was on History Channel or National Geographic. I, I don't remember which show, but I seen it. Huh. And I, I didn't know if you'd ever researched any of the history of that book or not. I have not. I have to tell you, I have not. I'm sorry to say. 
Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, being a huge horror fan uh, of people that are in horror films and horror authors, uh, my husband and I are both authors ourselves, and uh, I had ri written or wrote, uh, uh, read a quote where it said, Horror author Stephen King gave such a rave review of the film The Evil Dead, and this is what is thought that helped convince New Line Cinema to serve as its distributor. So I thought that was pretty kudos for Stephen King for seeing a good thing when he sees it. <laughs> yeah, no, he really, uh, they, he really liked it, and um, that was a huge, a huge plus for the makers of Evil Dead. That's for sure. Now, 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 moving, yeah, really liked it. On, moving on a little bit, you got to work with uh, Ron Perlman in The Hand of God. Is that? I, I haven't seen any of The Hand of God yet, but I really want to see that. Uh, did, well, did, The Hand of God was really was it was an Amazon show a couple of years ago. Actually, Ron Perlman started it, but my scenes were never with Ron Perlman. My scenes were with Dana Delaney and a couple of other actresses, and it was. Um, uh, I don't know why I went off the air. It was a great show. Um, there were some really, really intense scenes, and I'm really proud of the work that I did in that show. It's just that hardly anybody's seen it. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't but seen you it. you know what? That happens. But when i seen the trailer, I really want to see it. Uh, it seems like a very good series. Yeah. It's, uh, it was, um, it's, it's, uh, it's an intense show. Well, for all I think, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, if I haven't aged myself already here. The governor of California. Oh no, he's a uh, he's a uh, state judge, and he convicts um, somebody in the guy comes back to torture him and uh, realizes that maybe he made a mistake and then has visions uh, that he has made a mistake and wants to set this guy free. And it's I'm not explaining it very well at all, but it's it's um, it's pretty intense. It's really, really intense, and I really enjoyed working on the show, and I just wish more people could see it. Who, who out of all the directors you work with, who's your favorite director? Wow. Um, <laughs> hmm. Well, actually, there, there are a number of them, and um, uh, actually, Mario Van Peebles, Mario Van Peebles, who directed me. In the first episode of Hand of God was very, very fun. It was instrumental in helping me get the role. And in terms of the last callback and the last audition and the last meeting with production. And I've always been grateful to him for that. I really like working with uh, Sam Rainey. Um, I worked with him a few years ago again on Oz the Great and Powerful. And um, he just made for a very intense but relaxing and confident set. Um, so Sam, Sam, worked, Sam, uh, did, Sam did Oz the Great and Powerful? Yes. Golly, I didn't even know that. Uh, yes. Okay, now I yes. gotta check that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and uh, you know, I, I've actually really appreciated and respected all the directors that I've worked with, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, every one, every one of them brings a different, you know, flair to the production. That's awesome, and I have to say something, and I want to commend you yet again for taking time, and uh, I, I'm a mother myself, and uh, taking a break from your career to actually focus on being a mother, and to me, that's a statement that uh, speaks volumes, and uh, I want to thank you for that, for, you know, being taking time to be with your children and as a mother I know how important uh, family and children you know to have that time that you can never get back as a mother and taking a break from your career and uh, I want to thank you for for doing that I think that's very very important and it just goes to show everybody how much of a well-rounded professional person you really really are so thank you well thank you you know I am a firm believer that if you really want something badly enough you can have it all um, you can't have it at the same time, and nor would you want it all at the same time. Why would you want it all at the same time? So I, I'm very lucky and very grateful that I was able to take time off and raise kids and have a you know, small business on the side and then have the opportunity and the health to, once my kids were back in, uh, were in middle school and high school and off to college, that I had the ability to go back and um, return to acting. And in that 15, 20-year period, it changed tremendously, as every business did, you know, over a period of 20 years. So it was a great learning experience for me. And 
it was because of that early on in the late, in the early 2000s, I think in about 2000, or maybe it wasn't that early, um, 2005, 2006, I did a play with Catherine Ross and a friend, uh, another person in the uh, Judgment of Nuremberg, and there was a young actress in the play, and she said, you know, that's what you should really do improv. And I went, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know how to do improv. She goes, I know, that's why you should do it. And um, she just kept bugging me, and so I finally took some improv classes, and I'm totally hooked, and I continue to take improv now. I'm the oldest one there, just about, but I don't care. I don't care. I love it. As long as you're doing something that you love, that's all that matters, that's right. and that's great. That's right. I have a question for that's you. Did right. your kids, uh, when they were younger, they ever get to see you in Evil Dead? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not actually even sure, to be perfectly honest with you, and this is nothing against my kids. I'm not even sure they've seen the whole movie. Okay, okay. Well, I, yeah. I didn't... I didn't. I mean, they clearly know that I was in the movie now, but they didn't for many, many years. Right, right. Uh, it just it just wasn't something that you would discuss when you sat at the dinner table. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but mom wants wants a real a actor. <laughs> and we just didn't discuss it. Um, so no, they didn't know for quite some time. Let me let me ask you some set questions from there. Is uh, as far as like uh, when y'all were working on the Evil Dead, uh, did they provide y'all like uh, with meals and stuff like that throughout the night or no? Well, it depends on what you define as meals. Yeah. <laughs> Did we have a caterer? Did we have a little table with snack food? Hot coffee or hot chocolate? Absolutely not. Here's what would happen. We would all be at the house. It was a three-bedroom house and all of us, five actors and about five or six crew members shared. And um, our special effects guy, not a special effects guy, I'm sorry, it was another production assistant um, by the name of Josh Goodman would prepare food for us, and it might just be, you know, chicken, potatoes, carrots, and you're on your way. So we'd have a little supper, um, uh, we'd work all night, um, there was no hot coffee on the set, let me just repeat that, there was no hot coffee wow, or hot that's, water that's crazy. Set or, you know, yeah. snack bars, they didn't have snack bars back then, or healthy bars, there was no Snickers, no nothing, and um, then we would, you know, Wrap when it was sunlight because we couldn't shoot with the sun coming up, and we'd come back and you know have toast and eggs and crawl in the bed. So no, there was nothing on the set. Actually, very only one or two of us in the theater. Sometimes there was only one vehicle between eleven of us down there. And um, if anybody was going to the store for food or supplies, we'd say, "Oh, please, you know, pick me up this candy bar or pick me up this bag of chips." So that was about it. Let me, let me ask you this, yeah. uh, out of the whole film, Evil Dead, what was your favorite scene that you did in that movie? Um, favorite scene? I don't know if there was a favorite scene. Because um, you had some pretty good ones in there. The most memorable scene, I think, was um, the scene in which I'm in the nightgown, in the hallway, I've just been possessed, and I take on the baby doll character, and I start singing to Ash. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we played that and clip. And the reason I, that's the most memorable scene is because um, Sam Raimi and I had a long discussion on how to enhance his character, and um, we had all had made prosthetics of our faces prior to leaving the Detroit area to drive down to Tennessee. And my character was supposed to have, every time she was possessed, was supposed to have this um, prosthetic on, which was a gory, awful face. And I talked to Sam about it, and I said it just didn't seem real. She just, it was just so blown out of proportion that Ash would date this girl, and she would become so horribly possessed. And I said, you know, it's just as creepy. Quite frankly, if you just make her as sweet as a baby doll, and that you just kind of want to wring her neck, no pun intended. And so we thought about that, and we said, you know, well, could you add a voice to that? And so I started to sing that, and I started to talk, and I started to laugh like that. And he said, oh, my, I'm... Really, this is really what happened. He just kind of like freaked out. Oh my God, that is so creepy. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so that's how the character came about in terms of in terms of the possessed baby doll. And um, we just took off the prosthetic. We put rosy cheeks. 
like you would on a porcelain doll and we, we um, drew eyelashes on um, my face and to make it look uh, or, you know, to make a, a facsimile like of a, of a, of a painted doll and um, how creepy that would be if your doll all of a sudden, you know, came to life, which would be not normal. And so that's one of my most memorable scenes because we filmed that a number of times. That's awesome. And uh, further to the film, I know I read that uh, the initial uh, domestic gross was actually described by a lot of uh, critics as disappointing. And uh, when the film opened in 15 theaters, it was said to gross over 108,000 only in its opening week and uh, really disappointing. And they said, you know, word of mouth, really, it spread and it became a sleeper hit. But the fact that I find more fascinating, because I was in the UK at the time, and uh, in the UK, uh, at one point, um, it quickly became the week's best-selling video release and later became the year's best-selling video in the UK, outgrossing the large-budget horror release such as The Shining. So I think that, I mean, that speaks for itself. And it was said that uh, European audiences are more open-minded to that type of uh, film. What do you think, as an actress, a professional actress, you know, the European market at that time being kind of more open-minded than the American audiences? Well, yeah, the, some of the European market was. Um, uh, I think they just didn't know what to do with Evil Dead. It was so weird. It was so low budget. It was, you know, they had a very limited marketing um, spectrum until it took off. And there's, of course, there's a reason, another good reason why they took off, not only because of the spectacular acting, and I do mean that lightly, but... Um, it was really good, uh, actually. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, in Germany, um, we actually just came back from a convention in Germany. You know, it was banned for many, many years in Germany. Wow. It's being very violent. And they just recently lifted the ban, which has been, you know, um, proceeded to rev up the popularity of Evil Dead again, at least in Germany. You know, it's something that's interesting that one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why Evil Dead um, is so well known is that because it was, it was placed in the in the shelves of um, what actually didn't exist in the 60s and the 70s, and then no longer exist, which are um, video stores on the corner of every street. And prior to video stores, um, if, you, if a movie came into your city and you and I wanted to see a movie, we would go pay the money and go see it. And it, unless you just were just, you know, enchanted with the movie or just obsessed, you would um, maybe go see it again, but maybe not. You would just hold within your memories that you just saw that great movie last Friday. More often than not, the movie would change at the movie theater the following week, and um, so you no longer could see it. You no longer could see that movie that you just saw 10 days ago because the movie is no longer there. When the video stores came about, you could go on a, on a Friday night and rent the movie you could return it Saturday and get it out the following Friday. And you could watch it, return it, and get it out again. That's true. And that's what people did, and word spread. And um, it was it was due to a lot of the, um, of the success of the video stores in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. Let me ask you this. What, what happened to the car in the movie? Did somebody still so have Sam the car? Sam still has the car. Sam still has the car. They've been using it in the uh, in the uh, Star Show, Ash vs. Evil Dead. It's over in New Zealand right now. Oh, that is the original car they're using over there then. Uh huh. Oh, awesome. He still has it. He has it in every every. He even in Oz and the Great and Powerful, they dressed it up as a cart, as a large cart, a service a vendor's cart, and um, uh, but it's it's in every movie of his. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, We're, I know. Weird, right? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's, uh, yeah, that is pretty awesome. The, uh, yeah. I, I've lost my train of thought. I had another question for you here. Um, we have tons and tons of questions. We could probably talk to you for hours on end. I mean, it was just your, your. Oh, I know. I remember the question right now. It's, uh, do you still talk with Bruce at all or no? Yeah, I just saw him last week. Uh, actually, we were all in Germany together. Oh, um, awesome. We did a convention together and, uh, we often, and the evenings, you know, after dinner and just, you know, laughing and reminiscing. So I actually just saw him 
weeks and a half ago. Yeah, I used to watch that show that he had out where he played a CIA, ex-CIA guy. I can't even think of the name oh, of it. Oh, Burnt him. Notice. Yeah, yeah, Burnt Notice. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Great show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that one. If you could uh, work yeah. with if you could work with anybody uh, in the field, like somebody that you haven't had the ability to work with, would there be one person that you could think of that you would be dying to to work with and maybe sort of tell our listeners, you know, who that would be and why if possible? Or if you could even hone oh, no. it down to I one. Know sound, I know this is going to sound so weird, but, you know, as is often the case, the person that you'd love to meet or you'd love to have a conversation with happens and then it doesn't and then it doesn't work out like you thought it did or the person that you run in randomly into a store or on a sidewalk becomes one of the most intriguing people you've ever met. So I don't know if there's anybody I'm dying to work with. Um, I, I don't, and I'd be happy just about working with anybody. And I know that sounds cliche, I'm like, oh, Gussie, but it's true. Um, and you often find that you meet the lights are with people that you never even considered that you would ever meet or know in your life, so. So what, uh... I've met with, I've worked with some pretty great actors for which I'm very, very grateful. Many years ago, um, I did a um, CBS movie in a week called Word of Honor, where they hire movies every week on um, network television. Um, and these are full length feature movies and they were made into a two hour TV show. And I worked on a movie called Word of Honor and it starred the great Carl Malden, Rue McClanahan, Ron Silver, John Marley, and I actually played John Malkovich's fiance and then later to become wife. And, you know, that was a great, great, awesome experience. Yeah, John Malkovich is definitely a great actor. I've seen him in, uh, well, he was in the movie the other night in, uh, Con Air. That was a pretty good show. Um, yeah, good what, actor. what type of, since you uh, trained in college as a classical voice and things of that nature, what type of music do you listen to? Huh. Um, actually, I, I like to actually listen to just instrumental jazz. Huh. Okay. Um, that's, that's pretty relaxing. Yeah, I just like to listen to jazz, and it's not always vocal. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I would think that's, because most of the time if I'm listening to music, I'm actually, we're actually with friends or we're having friends over for dinner and we'll have music on it, so I don't want vocals to interrupt, I can't hear the vocals and talk to our friends, so I just have um, instrumental music on. That's 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 yeah. ingenious, I like that. I have, I have another yeah. question for you. Besides the okay. evil dead... What is your favorite horror movie of all time? Okay, well, now you're going to think this is really strange, but I don't watch horror movies. But I will tell you two movies that really struck out with me. As One is a very young girl. Somehow, I was allowed to go see Rosemary's Baby. So it's not horror. It was a psychological thriller. And that was very, very, very scary to me. Um, partly because it was done so well. Partly because I was so young. The other one, and I do not watch horror movies, and I do not watch even psychological thrillers, but I was really intrigued with this last year's <laughs> film called Get Out. Hmm, Get Out. Yeah, we got to check that one out. Yeah, I, for sure. I haven't heard of that one. But Rosemary's yeah. Baby, I remember seeing that too, uh, uh, and it really left uh, a very mental impression on me, and it was a lasting film that, uh, it, it was very, something that was, thought pondering to me and like you said it's a psychological thriller and uh, to me that can be sometimes more devastating than horror because it really makes you ponder and think about a different aspects of various topics so I had I came away from that film with the same uh, feelings that you had yeah I, I have one more question yeah. for you Bessie the uh do you have you ever had a paranormal experience like with ghosts or anything like that? Uh, paranormal experience like with ghosts? No, thank you, God Jesus, no. <laughs> um, however, I was just actually it was pretty funny to ask that because um, it's just um, at my improv class just a few weeks ago, and at the end of the evening. Somebody made a comment about, 
looking up in the window and saying, you know, I didn't want to say anything all night, but there's been somebody in that window all night looking at us. And the instructor said, oh, yeah, they said this place was haunted. And I'm telling you, I was the first one out of that class that night. Uh, no, I don't. I haven't. Well, that's no. good. That's no, good. No, 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 no. No. That's, that's definitely good. So, uh. We got a, uh, you, you're actually, we've been doing podcasts for a little while, but you're actually our first guest on the new name, under the new name. We're, we're now called the Tickle Trunk of Horrors, and there will be a website out soon with uh, with this podcast on it, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Uh, it's called TickleTruckOfHorrors.com, and so uh, it's great to have some such a legendary person from the horror field. Uh, is from a cult classic film, The Evil Dead, is our first guest under the new name. And I well, really, you're very sweet. I'm honored. I'm honored. You know, we just thought to get some, you know, an actress of your caliber on the show, uh, we just thought we had almost, it's almost like we had won the lottery because to have somebody uh, with your, you know, your caliber of acting and the different genres that you've worked in, we're very, very blessed to, for you to take time out of your busy schedule and because I know we had a lot of Evil Dead fans asking us when is she going to be on when is she going to be on so you know you have a huge huge following and like I said I, I'm really grateful that you were able to spare some time for us it means a lot to us and it means a lot uh, you know that just shows everybody that you you know you care about the work that you do and you can take you know moments for your fans out there that speaks volumes to your lasting power as an actress and thank you very much oh thank you so much I, I'm telling you you have to become my new PR agent <laughs> so happy to have you on my ship <laughs> hey she's really good at marketing I'll tell you that I've I've worked wow. on film film PR in the in, like I've worked on film PR in the past, but like you, uh, I had to I took time to raise my two boys, and uh, to me that was worth everything, and that's why I so I was so grateful when I read that about you. And I figured this is a lady worth talking to here because she's got her shit together, for lack of better words. And like I said, uh, you know what? I'm just speaking the truth, and you know when you're speaking the truth about a person, it just flows smooth as. Uh, butter oh absolutely well thank you so much and you guys thank you for having me on today hey we appreciate it and uh we'll 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 send you the appropriate links when uh when the podcast is uh complete and you have a great weekend and enjoy uh, uh your weekend and uh, again we're very very blessed to have you join us thank you thank you oh thank you too really appreciate it have a great weekend Stay you, safe. You, you too bye-bye all righty bye-bye now very, very thrilled and very blessed to have uh, actress Betsy Baker on our show. I mean, we just couldn't ask for a better uh, actress with such a high caliber of work. And uh, for all you Evil Dead fans out there or people that have not seen the Evil Dead, get your ass in gear and, uh, you know, 19... 81 was the film when the evil dead came out she played linda uh do yourself a favor uh get some friends together uh get some popcorn get some you know uh drinks and if you are drinking please be uh responsible with your drinking but do yourself a favor and pick up a coffee of the evil dead and to me it is the all-time cult classic uh, film and one of the greatest horror films of all time and uh, you know I was just blown away by Betsy uh uh, Baker, her caliber of work. She was Dr. Wheeler again on ER. She was in Oz, The Great and Powerful, Days of Our Lives, True Blood, Grey's Anatomy, and on and on. And you know, to have a lady have time for her fans to speak on our podcast again, like I told her, it just speaks volumes that she's the real deal and uh you know she appreciates her fan base so all you evil dead fans out there i mean it just doesn't get better than that and uh you know we hoping you know we'll be bringing other guests to the uh tickle trunk of horror podcast share uh join our website we're under construction we're just tweaking adding a few more thrills and chills for all of you out there so hang tight but it's uh called the tickle trunk of horrors dot com and uh you you'll be able to buy jewelry on there books on there you'll be able to hear the podcast on there 
you'll be able to uh, many things on there so uh, yeah we're just taking everything in a, in a kind of a new more horrific uh, uh, direction and uh, being able to have all of our uh, products and services and what have you on one location the tickle trunk of horrors is kind of where it's going to be all at so uh, once uh, you know listen to the podcast share subscribe listen uh, go to the website but you know I'm just you know my cup my horror cup uh, really is runneth over with having Betsy Baker on the show and uh, you know uh, she's just a, a powerhouse a real uh, actress with true staying power folks hey check this clip out again one more time this is Linda uh, played by Betsy Baker and Ash played by Bruce Campbell uh, here's this she even said it we played it before we had her on here and she ever she even said this was her favorite part you bastards why are you torturing me like this why <laughs> shut up we're gonna get you not another peep kind of gonna see so yeah that's uh she said she you just heard how that scene came to be when she was talking to sam about it and uh how they that's pretty interesting actually you know that's 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 one of my favorite horror movies right there cult classic and we wanted to take time to actually uh talk about the other work that she's done so i don't know if a lot of the evil dead fans thought that we were just going to be talking about the evil dead but well no. i mean with an actress of this of her caliber we just can't focus and we know uh, evil dead is a cult classic but she's just a such a diverse well-rounded and i wish her luck she's now doing improv wow i mean i i, I hope she continues well, to I move want to forward. see that hand of god series it looks well, like it's going to be pretty good i mean she just uh you know a fascinating person i mean we could have talked to uh, betsy baker for hours on end under so many different subjects because uh you know she's just a lady that you could sit down and have a coffee or drink with and just chat like an everyday uh person and i i, I really think it's awesome yep so i guess that's gonna be it for this episode we got a hell of a weekend for y'all uh this is friday the what's the date today today is uh friday uh april 20th and uh, the horror is just beginning folks so yeah stay you're tuned. not gonna want to miss this weekend uh for sure uh tomorrow sunday monday so yeah we're gonna be pretty busy here but that's it for us have a good one take care